Salutations, inspected viewers. I am George from Ireland, and here I am at the Serpentine in Hyde Park, London. So, uh, Serpentine is so called because uh, this um, pond curves a little bit, um, like uh, a snake. It's actually um, the river um, Westbrook, which is now an underground river largely built over. Um, but this is the bit which is exposed, which they've allowed to go much broader than it originally was to form this pond in, in Hyde Park. But why am I at this location? I'm going to talk about um, Percy Bysshe Shelley, the poet, and the women in his life. Well, this is the lugubrious spot where his 21-year-old uh, wife, uh, Harriet um, Westbrook, uh, threw herself into the Serpentine whilst heavily pregnant to commit suicide, and she indeed drowned in December 1816. Her body was, was fished out some days later. Um, so, <clears throat> a bit, bit about Shelley, and maybe we reflect actually about Westbrook. Um, it's almost like nominative determinism. I suppose it's just a coincidence. The idea that your name shapes your personality and the decisions you make. Like Martin Luther King, his surname was King, so he thought to be ought to be a leader. Or best example would be the poet William Wordsworth. Um, I've never met anybody else with that surname, that um, or heard of anyone else with that surname. Uh, he thought, well, I'm worth my words, so I'll be a poet. But um, Harriet Westbrook threw herself into this into this river, which is the Westbourne. Um, that's why there's Westbourne Grove elsewhere. And Brook um, uh, and Bourne were just really another word for a stream. Often they say burn, Westburn. Like in Scotland, even today, a stream is often known as a burn. Um, anyway, so uh, Shelley was born in August 1792 in Horsham, Sussex. That's a uh, county on the southern coast of England into a wealthy landowning family. His father, Sir Timothy Shelley, was a Whig member of Parliament, no less. Um, so Shelley was the eldest of six children, and his father was, was a baronet. That's why he's Sir Timothy, who wasn't, wasn't just Mr. Shelley. And um, Percy Bysshe Shelley was due to inherit that name. His um, unique uh, middle name, Bish, is um, a, a surname somewhere else in the family. The only other, you know, I've never heard of anyone else named Bish, but at University College Oxford, which he attended, and I did, not at the same time, uh, there was a society for those who are reading English literature um, called Bish um, because of him. Uh, he, so he's, he's now, he's now honoured by the college which once expelled him. So Shelley went to a school in Zion Lane, which was then Middlesex, just outside London, but now very much part of London. Unfortunately, that building no longer stands. And they went to, to Eton at the age of 12, an all-boys school, of course. I mean, schools were almost all gender segregated, where the good ones were, um, where he was horrifically bullied. He was baited by the others because he was a cloud dweller. Um, and he read voraciously and was indifferent to the sport of pleasures, which took up much of the time of the other boys. So the curriculum consisted principally of Latin uh, and ancient Greek, sometimes Hebrew, so they could read the Holy Bible in the uh, original language. Um, so he, he uh, left it at the age of 17. Uh, he was fascinated by science and not just by, by the humanities. So uh, he'd, already, he'd already stated his disbelief in God, which was really anathema at the time. So, um, and he was known as Mad Shelley and so on. Shelley the Atheist used to walk along a spit of land called Poet's Walk, which I should, which I should film on sometime. Um, and like to give people electric shocks, he'd work out how to do that. So he went up to University College Oxford, one of the colleges of Oxford University, and um, he had some sort of a romantic relationship with his, his cousin, his first cousin, which back those days wouldn't be considered incestuous. Incidentally, marrying your first cousin is still lawful in this country, it's just very unusual. In the Pakistani community in this country, it's not unusual, but there's a reason we usually look at scans in it, because um, the, the chance of your child being born severely disabled is greatly increased. Anyway, so that, that was that failed uh, liaison with her, um, and um, Oxford was all boys, of course, in those days, and uh, he continued reading voraciously, and um, it's thought that he only attended a single lecture whilst he was there. Um, but um, uh, graduating wasn't that difficult. One might just leave anyway after a few years without actually having taken a degree. And, and he showed the same complete indifference to, to games that uh, were so important to some of the other undergraduates. Anyway, his sisters were at a boarding school and he got to know one of their friends, uh, one Harriet Westbrook. Now, um, although the father was affluent, but he'd once run a pub, and uh, Sir Timothy, that's Shelley's father, thought this was infra dignitate. But um, uh, this, this young girl, Harriet, she was 16, she started corresponding with Shelley, and um, Shelley's father said, I shan't hear of it, you will not have any sort of relationship with her. Um, she is your, beneath your station in life. You should marry a well-bred young woman. 
good breeding stock with somebody somebody also from the uh, landed classes. But um, Harriet had a much older sister, aged 28, who would encourage this liaison. Um, and the, the, the Westbrook family thought it might be an advantageous alliance. Anyhow, so the two fled to Scotland. They crossed the border where they're able to wed at the age of 16 without parental permission. In England, you required parental permission to marry under the age of 21. He was 19, she was 16, and so they married. And they returned to England, had their honeymoon in the Lake District, where uh, he was friends with Robert Southey, Shelley was, the, the, who was then a well-known writer, not quite so widely appreciated these days. And eventually they turned to London, but um, Sir Timothy was incensed that his son had uh, married without his say-so. Um, incidentally, this marriage was lawful in, in Scotland to get married at that stage without parental permission. And when they returned to England, it was still legally recognised. Whereas had they contracted the marriage in England, it would not have been lawful. So Scots law was more liberal in this regard, but uh, was still held valid if you returned to England subsequently. Um, so the Westbrook family thought, oh, well, she's married a wealthy guy who's... Uh, um, but, but Sir Timothy said he wasn't giving his son a brass, brass farthing. And there didn't, didn't seem to be any, son, uh, any talk of annulling the marriage. But anyway, um, soon Harriet was with child. So she soon delivered a baby and then they had another one in short order. They started living in London. Shelley was, was, was trying to write to support himself, not quite Grub Street, but writing various pamphlets which didn't sell well. Perhaps uh, he was uh, too verbose and orotant um, because uh, he uh, amassed an extraordinary vocabulary, partly due to his incessant reading. Um, and he espoused just about every radical nostrum going in those days. Vegetarianism, gender equality, the abolition of slavery, racial equality, the abolition of monarchy, the abolition of heritable titles, um, uh, votes for all, animal rights, pacifism, uh, you name it. Now, many of these ideas are now rightfully regarded as mainstream. Um, but he, he borrowed um, uh, heavily in order to support his growing family. Um, people thought it was a sound investment because in those days, uh, debt was a criminal matter. And if he failed to stump up, he could be finding himself in um, Newgate debt of, debtors prison or Marshalsea uh, prison for debtors south of the River Thames, where Charles Dickens' father, John, was subsequently incarcerated. And people thought that Sir Timothy, however badly he's fallen out with his son and heir, he shan't suffer his son to be thrown into a dark and fetid dungeon for debt. Ultimately, he'll come good and pay off the boy's debts. Um, the other option, of course, Shelley was to, was to take ship to another country. But uh, the Napoleonic Wars were on, and that was that was a non-starter for the time because you'd be interned. You weren't anywhere that was controlled by uh, the French or their or their satellites. Um, uh, so what else? And the other thing is that Sir Timothy might die at any moment. Sir Timothy was in rude health, only middle-aged, but you know, no, no one's health was that assured in the 18th century. Oh, uh, sorry, early 19th century. Me medical science being what it was at the time, and and so, 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 well, Shelley is going to be a baronet, but he's going to inherit this very extensive property worth well over six thousand pounds, which was a very tidy sum in those days. But um, Shelley found the gloss coming off his marriage very quickly, um, settled down to the. Um, uh, humdrum reality of married life, um, squalling infants and um, the nappies needing to be emptied. I mean, I know they could afford a few servants, but they were not living in the lap of luxury that he was accustomed to. And um, people who marry when they are um, mad with romantic love come to quickly regret it. And they were adolescents, perhaps they didn't really know what they were doing. They hadn't had a terribly long courtship before they'd had their hand fasting in Caledonia. Um, so, uh, and money was short. So he met a teacher who was several years older than him, a spinster, and she was a woman of advanced views, and he began corresponding with her, and he found that Harriet Westbrook was very young and intellectually limited, so she wasn't a satisfying conversational partner, there was no meeting of minds there, so Harriet became suspicious of her husband's um, uh, conversations with this other woman was it a criminal conversation as they would have said at the time in legal terminology but he assured her no that his feelings for this woman were entirely platonic were they so unromantic he addressed this woman as sister of my soul well sister that's got to be platonic um, but uh, then um, Shelley met someone else. He started frequenting a coffee shop run by William Godwin, who was one of the foremost radical writers of the age, uh, who is someone who's largely now lost to remembrance. Um, the, the, um, the, the widower of Mary Wollstonecraft, the mother of modern feminism. And indeed, Shelley met uh, Mary Godwin, as in the daughter of Mary Wollstonecraft. So Mary Wollstonecraft, the woman who uh, penned a vindication of the rights of women, or sorry, women, she had died of purple fever only 11 days after giving birth to her um, daughter, Mary Godwin. So um, uh, Shelley um, uh, took a shine to her. Now, Godwin, William Godwin was aware that his uh, 
grown daughter had caught the eye of this 21-year-old married man. But uh, you think he might discourage this. Uh, obviously, getting married at 16 was completely normal in those days. Um, but no, he said, go ahead. Obviously, divorce was a very lengthy and expensive uh, legal process. Hello there, Sutherland. And was considered to be an outright outrageous scandal for the sinned against as well as the sinning. So that was more or less um, just off the table as an option. Um, but Godwin uh, was perennially in debt. He himself uh, was leading this scapegrace life, only narrowly avoiding um, uh, imprisonment for debt in those days. Hello there, Diane. Um, so he thought, well, I should encourage this because um, Shelley has said, uh, oh, well, I'd really like to help you out financially. Godwin was publishing his uh, radical books and children's storybooks and so on. He came from a very brainy um, family of bookworms. Um, so he thought that Shelley was, was like manna from heaven. This was the answer to all his prayers. And he, he was somewhat religious, had briefly been a nonconformist minister, uh, whereas Shelley was a disbeliever in the divine. Uh, but uh, Shelley then said, oh, well, I can't really stump up because my dad's not giving me a penny. Uh, so Godwin was, was put out by that. But nonetheless, Harriet was Westbrook and, and Shelley in, um, I think it was July uh, uh, 1814, they suddenly formed a romantic relationship and they ran off together, leaving Shelley's wife, Harriet Brook, high and dry and uh, so uh, pregnant with their, with their third child. Um, so uh, what, what was I going to say? So um, Harriet Westbrook and Shelley, they went to France um, uh, before long. She was pregnant. They took along someone else. Was it, was it Fanny Imlay? Was it her half-sister? And um, Or no, it was Claire Claremont, I think. And some people think that Shelley was having a relationship with her as well. Um, but uh, anyway, they, they returned to England after a few weeks. Neither French, no, no, sorry, neither of them could speak French very well, So, but Claire Claremont could. Um, and there was a, she was involved with, with, with the Lord Byron, the poet, as well, as I remember. It was a very small literary world. Certainly these radical writers like John Keats, um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Lee Hunt and so on, they all, they all knew each other and spent a lot of time with each other. Was the population was much smaller. The population of this country back then was only about 8 million well, um, of Great Britain. Obviously, Ireland were about 4 million. So that is almost 10 times larger now. Um, and, and, and some people weren't literate at all. So what, what, what was the next step? Um, so uh, Harriet Westbrook, she didn't destroy herself immediately. She waited almost two, well, she waited over two years. And she'd had some sort of, Shelley'd come back to her somewhat, was, was, was too timing her. She was aware of this and she was distraught. I think she'd had a miscarriage first, then she fell pregnant again. So uh, then she couldn't take it anymore. And that's when she jumped into the Thames, uh, not the Thames, sorry, right here and killed herself. So Shelley was then free to marry uh, his, uh, his uh, second lover, Mary Godwin, who'd already given birth to his child. He went off to, he went off to um, Italy with her. And there was another um, baby um, born in Italy. And this little girl had Shelley as a surname, and he said he would provide for this child financially. Was she, was she sired by Shelley or not? Or did he simply um, uh, agree to help out um, this, this baby whose mother was, was impecunious? Not quite clear. Anyway, so um, Shelley died off the coast of Livorno. In, in Italy. He was on a boat with um, two other Britons, which, which capsized about 10 miles out, um, and they all drowned. But was it deliberately rammed by pirates? It's, it's unclear. And the bodies washed ashore sometime later, Viareggio. And I've been to Viareggio, and I, was, I didn't think of it at the time. I knew it was quite close to Livorno, but I didn't realize that's where his body was brought ashore. There must be some sort of memorial there. I wish I'd, wish I'd filmed it. So he was, he, was, he was cremated on the beach according to the regulations at the time, Lee Hunt watching. Lord Byron couldn't bear to what to, 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 to see it so he retired to a to a horse-drawn carriage and was the heart recovered or not is it buried in the family mausoleum is disputed but anyway most of his ashes certainly were interred at the protestant graveyard in rome which i would very much like to visit so shelley had this um short turbulent and suitably dramatic life for uh, someone of such a prodigious literary output. You know, obviously, I, I hold my talent cheap beside someone like him. But then again, I think, well, you know, he didn't have to pass any exams. The rest of us do. He didn't have to earn a living as such. So, not surprisingly, he could be a prodigious uh, writer. All right, that's enough about Shelley here at, uh, here at um, uh, the Serpentine, where his good wife ended her life because she'd been jilted by him. So most people now regard him as a love rat. Anyway, so book lessons with me in um, English literature, English as foreign language, history, politics, French law, anything like that. And um, choose me as your tour guide in London. Follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook and so forth. Um, so uh, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for the donations on Patreon Patreon and PayPal. George Callahan 79 at gmail.com. Toodle pip.
turn off, you fucking thing.